2025 is almost over. Hooray, right? This is my last YouTube video for the year. One of the reasons is I'm working on a secret project that'll be done here in the next couple of weeks. It takes all my time. But anyway, what I thought we would do with this video is we would do a review of the year of 2025 from the point of view of the Power Platform, right? So Power Apps, Power Automate, Copilot Studio, those type of tools. And the way that we would frame it is by the videos I make. So every week-ish, pretty close, I make a YouTube video and every week I struggle with what should I cover this week. Some weeks are super easy because it's like, hey, there's these new things to talk about. And some weeks it's like, hmm, what are people asking about? So I thought we would just go through all the videos I did this year, make sure that we highlight some of the ones that you might have missed, but more importantly, use it to kind of tell you the story of what's going on. And then we'll end this video with talking about what's coming in 2026 from my point of view. So if that sounds like fun, then let's switch over to my desktop and take a look. All right, so we're here inside of YouTube Studio, a little bit of a different view than you normally get. And we're just gonna kind of walk backwards from January of 2025 all the way up until my last video here in December and kind of get a picture, right? So I usually start the year out with something silly like working out. So I tried to show push-ups mostly because I wasn't ready to make a video yet, right? This one's pretty cool. I got to talk about using a headset to do power apps, right? So the headset, you can use voice control, uh, barcode scanning, all of that. Like that was a really neat one that didn't get a lot of views. I don't know if it was too early in January or what, but I thought that was a really cool concept. And then we got to our first Copilot video, right? What is Copilot chat? 2025 has been all about Copilot one way or another, right? Whether you like it or not, it's driven the bus. And so that was my first one, just trying to help people understand the difference between, you know, personal chat versus business chat and kind of how that all worked. We then had a lovely video about making things pretty, but Ryan did that video was a smash. Turns out you guys really like pretty videos. I wish I could make them, but Ryan made it. It worked out well. Um, you know, then we had some basic power app stuff, did autonomous agents for email. So Copilot Studio autonomous agents, um, you know, another one of those topics that I probably should remake that video. I might remake that one now that I'm thinking about it because autonomous agents and Copilot Studio, like it has changed a lot over the course this year. And that's one of them. Um, we then had a deep dive into Dataverse and add AI to your apps and flow webinar. I think adding AI to power apps and flows today is one of the best ways to get that incorporated into your business, right? But so I guess this is February, let's jump another month. So down here, um, then we had the incident reporting example. Oh, such a good video. That one shows you a full solution. I demo this to customers on sales calls all the time, right? Starts with a power app canvas app. You enter the incident information and then it goes and gets saved with the picture, the witness statements, all of that into different Dataverse tables. And then we have an AI autonomous agent that triages that and goes through and helps you, you know, figure out how to categorize that all with the power of AI. Super fun one. Then we got into um, another one, another pretty video from Ryan. That one did not do as well, still did great. Um, get image description here. So this is using AI prompts. Remember, this is kind of back to that whole idea should be using uh, AI in Power Apps and Power Automate. So I think we end up doing a form of this video two or three times over the course of the year. Really keep trying to encourage people. AI prompts are amazing. You should be checking those out. Uh, Copilot uh, for 365 in Outlook. Using SharePoint as knowledge, right? Like this is one of those ones we keep trying to find the right answer. You know, SharePoint lists still don't work really well in Copilot Studio. And so instead of using them as knowledge, we end up using them via tools. That does work pretty well. So that video held pretty well. Here's another fun one. You're getting bad advice from social media. There's so much bad information on Reddit, Twitter, LinkedIn, all those places. Even other YouTubers make stuff that eh, they probably shouldn't, but I'm not the YouTube police. I can't stop them. Just a good reminder that, you know, just because someone said it on the internet, even if it was me, doesn't make it true. You've got to validate it, take it with a grain of salt. Uh, we did a little bit in the model-driven world, thanks to Juan, outside of my skills. Um, we pulled in a uh, app that someone else had built in the community and talked about the power of community. I thought that was really neat. You get to play Minesweeper inside of Power Apps. I have spent hours doing that this year. Um, another Copilot Studio one, right? Creating draft emails. This one's hilarious because I figured out how to do it by the API. And then literally a month after I rolled this video out, they're like, oh, you know what we should do? We should make that a tool, make that easier to do. And they did. I, I just kind of angrily shook my fist, you know, like you guys just watched my video and turned it into a new product feature. Like, 
I'm like, is that a compliment or I don't know. I, it stressed me out. Um, anyway, but here you can see like several Copilot Studio videos uh, kind of sprinkled in here. And the reason for that is because as Power Apps and Power Automate people, we have all the skills to be awesome at Copilot Studio. And so since we've got all those awesome skills, we need to use them. And so I keep trying to sprinkle that out there and get you guys to embrace it. All right, let's see the next list. Nine new features in Power Apps, right? So this was April of, uh, 20, or of 2025. And so they rolled out a whole bunch of new stuff. Uh, so if we click into there real quick, right, we got the ability to drag and drop controls. We got data workspaces. The create screen got a whole new interface, um, new screen templates, stock photos, asset cleanup, uh, restoring old versions, you know, uh, plans, the whole AI feature for helping you like plan out an app like got a lot better, uh, which also they invested in throughout the entire year. But this was just one of those little checkpoints. I was like, hey, look, here's all these little things that Microsoft puts out that don't warrant their own videos or their own even blog posts from Microsoft. So I just kind of threw those all into a video. All right, so then back over here, um, then we have my first video of the year on modern versus classic and kind of comparing some of the controls. Um, you know, modern controls, like they're one of those things I'm still not using a lot. Um, they just never got fully baked, right? Copilot came in, took away a bunch of the dev cycles and I don't know. I'm still kind of not a modern fan, a modern fan, modern control fan. Um, I know they have a great place. I know a lot of people love them, but if I'm building an app, nine times out of 10, I'm still in classic. Um, a couple other random ones here. I then tried to do a modern combo box one. That video also did pretty well. Uh, you know, you guys are into, interested in modern controls, whether I like them or not. Uh, more Copilot Studio. Um, here's one revamp the app. So I tried to show me working through editing an existing app. So kind of doing a phase two in an app. So you kind of see me dropping in the middle and how I would work through that. Uh, did not do very well at all, but uh, it was, was an interesting video that I thought would have been more better received. Um, and then May, you know, the attachment control got broken. So when they broke it, I said, okay, here's the workaround fix. I then went to the product team and had to work with them, show them how to work around, explain to them what was going on. And you'll see a couple more videos up here. Like we finally get that uh, all worked out. But that's one of those ones where I went to battle for you guys and me and the product team went until I got the uh, the attachment control fixed into its great state that it is today. Right? It, it got improved once it was all said and done. So that was worth it. M365 Copilot again. It's got a wonderful feature called Create over there for generating images and other visuals that you can not only create and edit, uh, also videos. Um, doesn't get a lot of uh, play, but it is a great little feature. Then I did a video um, on tables, right? In Power Apps dropdowns, everything you need to know, just a bunch of little mechanic stuff, very well received video. Um, you know, turns out you guys like to learn about mechanical stuff sometimes. And that was one of those cases where you were into it. Um, then here in June, right? Kick off your summer. They ended up, or I guess the summer if you're on, uh, you know, the Northern Hemisphere. We ended up, uh, finally, they could start to integrate uh, Copilot Studio agents in the whole SharePoint agents things. Like, it's still weird that Copilot Studio agents and SharePoint agents are different platforms altogether. I do not like that at all. And so we just kind of deal with it. And so that video is kind of showing you some of the mechanics, some of the things you could do, even though they're both separate, how they do somewhat work together. Super confusing. Uh, also has a weird licensing niches to it. All right, next screen. All right, so for the summertime fun, um, you know, got into the whole incident report stuff again. Uh, talked about excluding weekends and holidays and power apps. I would have thought that was a banger, but uh, did not get loved as well. Month in, we finally fixed the attachment control. Woohoo! People watched that one because they were very happy. And when they fixed it, not only did they fixed it, they made it a little bit better for our pain and suffering, I guess. I don't know. Here's another one that was really surprising to me. Power apps download function. So Jeff from my team joined um, and showed us how to do some download stuff directly from SharePoint using some URL manipulation. It was a very, very good little video. Good old fashioned Power Automate tips and tricks, like classics. I, I probably didn't make enough Power Automate content this year, if we're being honest. Microsoft Copilot Agents, uh, what you can do, build without writing code. So this is one, like, this is a really important one. I start off almost my, all my AI classes with this slide Showing that, you know, we've got the out of the box agents, agents, we got no code agents, low code agents, full code agents, and explaining the difference between all of those because it's really hard to build an agent if you don't know which agent tool to use or why you should use which tool. So 
I love that video to death. Um, I reuse that content all the time. So speaking of reusable, right, uh, they rolled out Power, Auto, uh, Power Apps UDF for uh, user-defined functions for reu reusable functions. There's too many usables in there. Um, that was a good little video. Uh, did really well. Uh, once again, one of those new features that we'd wanted for a long time that finally went mainstream for us. And then I tried this little classic, you know, Power Apps mistakes that kill your app before writing in code, little planning type of stuff. Well, didn't do the greatest, but fun one. Deep linking, right? People love to deep link in Power Apps. It's a super great functional way, right? Like you give a user a link that takes them not only to your app, but to the screen and the record, the information you want them to see. Super popular video, super popular topic. You should definitely be doing deep linking more if you're not. And then here the end or beginning of August, Eric joined us and he talked about, uh, you know, modernizing and technical debt and all of that stuff. It's a talk he's given to several customers in person. And so we kind of turned it into a mini version for YouTube and really great little talk if you're struggling with, you know, modernization efforts, technical debt, those type of things. All right, next screen. All right, Power Apps vacation request and approval without flows. Oh, approvals without flows are almost always the way I do it because I don't like the flow approval process. That showed you how we did that. We brought in some deep linking, um, really good little video there. Kobot Studio added agents calling agents. So did a little video on that. Agents calling agents sounds super advanced. It actually makes your agents easier to build. So I love that. Uh, new tools in the Power Platform for a few, better future. Right? And so this is another one of those ones where you know we just talked about some of the small features that rolled out. So Dataverse got prompt columns. You can have a Dataverse column that's like a calculated column we've had in SharePoint for years, but now it can be uh, done with an AI prompt. So that was pretty cool. Uh, Model-driven apps also got form filler. So you can you know give it uh, data. It can fill out the form for you based on the information you share with it. That's a set of features that continue to enhance. I, uh, I really enjoy that one. Um, also, generative pages in model-driven apps. This is very model-driven apps, apparently. Uh, generative pages is that ability to add into your model-driven app a code drive page, but you create it by just saying, hey, make me a page to do blah, blah, blah. That whole vibe coding thing, but inside of model-driven apps. And then Copilot Studio agents calling agents, which had already had its own video. Then I went with the hot buttons. I was just trying to be controversial. Is SharePoint a database for power apps? I think it is. Uh, you probably think it's not. Like it's an arguing thing all the time. In the, the day, it doesn't matter. Is really what the video is about. Five SharePoint features you should be using. So this is just a reminder. Um, control my PCs. So uh, Copilot Studio agents got the ability to do computer use, where you can take over and run a PC. And I show you how to do that, and I show you it running the laptop on my desk. Very cool. Like a lot of people have gotten really excited about that one once they've seen it. AI generated charts and power apps. This is using AI prompts and passing a bunch of dynamic information and having it generate your chart image. A really powerful tool there that I built. Um, you know, video got no love whatsoever, but that is a really cool one. Um, so then, the end of September, um, my dear old friend Todd Quint. Right, if you've followed me in the SharePoint days, uh, right, I've been doing this stuff for 20 years. Um, Todd and I used to do a bunch of stuff, right? We wrote a bunch of those books together back there. And so him and I have been doing a co-pilot news show, not on any type of regular cadence, but kind of as there's been new stuff come out. And so that was our first one of those. And then we had another video on using barcodes in Power Apps, uh, barcode scanners in Power Apps, very popular always. Then just a classic redo of build your first Power App with SharePoint. Um, you know, I've done build your first app. Like the first one had hundreds of thousands of views. And, you know, we just kind of, right, how to build first app kind of keeps changing periodically. So I have to remake the video on a regular basis. I'll probably make it again next year. All right, next screen. Oh, the last screen, even better. All right, so there's another Copilot News down there at the bottom. Um, then we have the workflow agents. So M365 got a workflow agent that you use words to build a, version of Power Automate for you, but you can't edit it or customize it the way you think. You literally just use your words and it's literally just an M365. Has nothing to do with Power Automate, even though you kind of feel like it should. It doesn't. They followed that up also with App Builder Agent. So same type of thing, M365 purely, but is generating a version of a Power App, a code app inside of M365. So like personal productivity is what both those are around. Then we went back to another classic, delegation. If you don't know what delegation is in Power Apps, it is irresponsible to build them. So please don't do that. And then agent flows, right? So that's the version of Power Automate that is inside of Copilot Studio. That one is um, 
you know, it's finally started to get some of its own features. And so AI approvals and requests for information are two features that are only in agent flows, but are not in Power Automate. Then we did a video on Power FX. So Power FX is the formula language that we use in Power Apps. It is also the formula language you use in Copilot Studio. So I'm always trying to help you guys remember to bridge those gaps, connect those dots. And that is one of the keys is Power FX is in both. Then we have Vibe, vibe.powerapps.com. Vibe coding in the Power Apps world, right? It generates code apps. Um, it works pretty well. I've used it for um, quite a few different things already. You know, I made a fake AS400 the other day with it. Like, it is a great thing for me to prototype and build demos and such really fast using words. I, Pretty impressed with that one, quite frankly. Another co-pilot news from Todd and I. And then five ways to filter a Power Apps gallery, right? More of your just classic skills. And then last but not least, intro to adaptive cards. Adaptive cards are something we use inside of uh, Power Automate all the time today. They also are in Copilot Studio, right? Skills transferring. Um, and so I was showing those to someone and they're like, I didn't know about adaptive cards. I thought everyone did. So I made that video to help, right? So if you look at the year, what do you see, right? You don't see anything profound in the Power Apps, Canvas app space, right? Um, and that reason for that, if we're just being honest, is like Microsoft's doing a lot in the AI space and core Canvas apps are not, you know, getting lots of changes. Now, that does not mean they're going away. Some people hear that to say, oh, that means they're just getting rid of those. No, Canvas apps are still super important. Canvas apps are really mature and stable though at this point, right? So they don't have to keep rolling new features, new features, new features, new features in there, right? They continue to refine, make sure that everything's running really nice and stable. We're still building Canvas apps left, right, middle. Um, they're very popular, but they just don't expect them to change a lot, right? That's the difference, right? They're mature, they're a steady state, which is good. Um, same with Power Automate, steady state, good. New AI workflow stuff, Go over in Copilot Studio. Copilot Studio, lots of videos in here because it changes radically all the time. You know, April of this year, it changed a whole bunch. And now like once a week, there's something new, something different. Uh, it's really challenging to keep up with, but that's my job, right? So that's why I keep making these videos to keep you steered on what is interesting there. So if I get out my crystal ball, I'm like, Ooh, it'd be nice if I could do images. I pull a crystal ball on the screen, but imagine there's one in my hands. Um, you know, what do I see for 2026, right? I see uh, Canvas apps, a whole bunch of the same, right? Staying level, um, you know, they've committed to, uh, you know, things like modern controls, finally getting those completely out the door so they're no longer in this quasi preview state. So let's hope that comes true. Um, you know, a lot there of just more of the same, which is good. We have millions, or not millions, thousands of customer apps built on that. Like we personally have thousands of customer apps built on that platform. Um, so we want it to continue to stay steady and mature. Uh, Power Automate, same type of story, steady and mature. Now you will continue to see new things, right? Vibe.powerapps.com. That's not changing Canvas apps. That's not a new Canvas app. That's just a new way to build a different type of app. Um, you'll also continue to see agents. Now we keep having customers come to us like, hey, build me an agent to do blah. And we're like, we would happily do it. But in reality, their solutions are usually, I'm going to build you a Power App, to do this portion, a agent flow or Power Automate Cloud Flow to do this portion, and the agent to do this portion. Right? Like it's a holistic solution is what most customer answers are, even though they're walking in the door saying, I just need an agent. So you guys have got to get ahead of that. You've got to keep learning about Copilot Studio. That is going to be that foundation that you're going to need. You're going to have to be able to build agents. That's the evolution of our skills, right? So that's kind of what I see for 2026 is a lot more demand for people like you and me to be able to build agents that go together in an ecosystem with our Canvas apps and our uh, cloud flows. Remember, it's all the power platform. It's all one big happy story. So what about you? What are you thinking for 2026? What was your favorite video for 2025? Would love to hear any of your thoughts. What do you want me to make content around in 2026? You're like, you know what? Just make power apps all the time. Probably not going to, but if that's your opinion. Share it. All right, with that, I'm gonna say, have a happy new year, Merry Christmas, happy holidays, whatever it is, and have a great day.